We... I like being insensitive, personally. I like... Touching on, I like touching on things, uh, topics I'm not Touchy supposed to touch. Shit. Yeah, insensitive. I like I like controversial. So I love that. So yeah, I'm so. just so expect that for me, especially as as I consume more liquor. Nah, that's because I got a raunchy sense of humor. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so that's like, great though. I've lost. Ours, ours is fucked up. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. ours is fucked up. I've been lost. A couple friends. They came back, but yeah, because yeah, we, right, we real. I'm cool yeah, without them. To be honest. When's your birthday? December 10th. Okay. Sagittarius. Yeah, I fuck with Sagittarius. What's when you? What's your Aquarius? February oh, yeah, fuck. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm November 22nd, so... Scorpio. Oh, you're Sag, too? Yeah, yeah, you're on the borderline, exactly. Cause right there. Yeah, I yeah. think one of my signs is a Sag, too. I'm not that deep into it that much, nah, but I think one of, my side, one of my signs is a Sag. I know who, what signs I get along with, and I know what signs I don't, just based off females I dealt with, you feel me? <laughs> facts. No, that's <laughs> facts. I know who I can deal with and who I can tolerate and what stupidity that comes with them. Right, right. Yeah. Coast, 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 coast. All my niggas, we coasting. High grade, we smoking. On the highway, we rolling. Rolling. Crack a bottle, we toasting. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I put his ass Sometimes on the spot. I don't even be knowing. Yeah, I like, put his Yo. ass on the spot. <laughs> no, listen, you can't do that shit to me, man. Sometimes you gotta have some fun, you know. It'd be a little spontaneous. I know they're tired of me saying hearing the same thing every yo, yo, single yo, fucking yo. episode. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of Weed and Whiskey Podcast with your greatest co host, Quell and O'Shane. You already know, man. What up, man? And we have a celebrity guest in the building, man. I think we're gonna start making all our all our guests a celebrity, man. Yeah. Matter of fact, we already know we don't do guests, we do co hosts. Because the personalities be too big for them to be just a guest. Yeah, no interviews over here, ladies and gentlemen. But we're going to break her that rule a little bit because we want to highlight him a little bit. Uh, this man, yeah. uh, honestly, we got put on with him through the Russell. The Russell, shout out to the Russell Grab and Go. Y'all fool slap. We said that already. So if y'all haven't checked out the Russell yet, what is it? Why no New Britain 9? 881 yeah. New Britain 9. Go check yeah. that shit out, man. Tell them Weed and Whiskey sent you. And on Wednesdays, if you wear a local... Uh, brand minority owned brand you anything get 10% off your you get 10 percent off your order and you might get lucky you might get a free cmos there you go so Damn. another reason go check them yeah, out i better go do that <laughs> yeah check them out so they set this up so we thankful for that this man has pretty much in the process of saving lives and extending lives and not even knowing it and a lot of people don't even realizing it they're seeing the benefits in his products he said he's been doing it for a while now, so he knows the magic in it, and it's about time all oh, y'all motherfuckers get lit to the shit, man. Mm-hmm. About that time. So we have in the building, we have Mother's Moss. We have Mike from Mother's Moss, one half of Mother's Moss in the building today. So shout out to the whole company and all, and shout out to everything that you're doing. And welcome, my brother. It's a pleasure to have you and everything that you bring to the community. We love everybody who's trying to bring positivity to the community and bring health and wealth to the community because not a lot of people are trying to push that right now so shout out to you for contributing to both of that man so welcome to the weed and whiskey studios how you doing my man i'm doing amazing first of all you know thank you for having me pleasure no Uh, doubt it's it's definitely i've been looking forward to this since we scheduled it name me too yeah we had to get this one going man yeah like this was heavy on my list i had a a really long productive day yeah i I had to make sure i ended my day with this right here so we're gonna make it right we're gonna make the wind down right because you know that's what we do over here man we just sit back we 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 chat and and get the things going it's healthy conversation exactly sometimes unhealthy but it's all right that's cool too it's all right it's 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 necessary you need toxicity once in a while it's balanced right that's the only way you (laughs) really understand all aspects of life i can probably recommend another podcast i can tell you about self-help shit and whatnot that we don't do that Help yourself, <laughs> motherfucker. Right. Help your motherfucking self. The you only thing you over here, over here is weed and whiskey. That's Facts. all. It. That's it. Facts. If you find, if we say something where you use it to help yourself, touche, my nigga. But that was not our purpose. <laughs> it wasn't. That's a fact. <laughs> Ain't no just... self help shit over here, bro. <laughs> I'm just letting you know that we, we just speak our bullshit. And that's exactly. It. Make you fun of everybody. Exactly. Yeah. Shit, man. So, like you said, you had a productive day. Y'all had uh, um your pop up shop at uh, Buckland Hills Mall and um. Manchester, Connecticut today. Yeah, shout out uh Black made the brand cousin Q. Oh man, he what he has going on right now, he's really for the people. Word. Uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be possible without him. You know, he's necessary. So we need him. We need more people like him with the mindset and mentality. 
that he has because he really just wants everybody to win. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that was beautiful to see. Just and I love my that. first pop up ever. How was it for like? How oh, was that? Man. Like it was amazing. Were man. you unprepared? I'm never unprepared. Okay, because our first pop up was a miss. Very yeah. Oh my uh, god. So that's the thing, right? Like he been telling me come out and do it, but I'm like I'm not ready yet. I okay. still had to get certain things situated behind the scenes. Mm. And now that everything is flowing the way it's supposed to. I'm like I reached out to him like we ready. So you knew so so you was already prepared before You prepared yourself before, before yeah. reaching back out. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Prior to because I, I feel like, you know, loved everybody that was there, but we, we were probably the most successful. That's what's up, man. at that event. And this was my first one, but first of many. To um, come. We, As we I love to say to talk your shit. <laughs> <laughs> talk your shit. We, nah. we gonna flood it now because just seeing the response from the people like Shout were out you, to the people, man. Were you getting, like, uh, mixed clientele? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what I was looking forward to because just with me being in just the field that I'm in now and just stopping by the grab-and-go every couple of days, that has helped me interact with people that's purchasing a product. So mm -hmm. now I'm at the grab... I mean, at the um, pop-up shop. I'm ready for anybody that's coming. Cause yeah, yeah, yeah. I, even the people that's like, no, thank you, I don't want it, people... You know, you get the people who give you a little attitude here and there. Yeah, yeah. but when they, they only come for shit. one thing. Exactly. But yeah. then they try it. Now, you know, the personality, they liven up, they more bubbly. Now they, they want to talk to you. They exactly. open, right? So, yeah, once you, once you, when somebody like, nah, but then they hear you out and, yeah. and see what you're talking about, they right. kind of get nice. They, like, and I, I don't force anything on anybody. So yeah. it's just like, you know, if you would like to try it, cool. If not, you know, that's cool as well. But here's the flyer. This is what, the benefits of it for you want to help yourself. Take a sample and try it out. That's if respectful. you don't want to help yourself, then, you know, move along to the next table. You know what? I like that because I thought it was funny. I used to go on websites, right? And there's a website. I don't remember which one. And then, you know, when you log on websites, they ask you if you want a coupon code or whatnot. Yeah. I had one that said, do you want to take 30% off or pay full price? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but it kind of makes you feel guilty in a yeah, way, right? Yeah. It does. <laughs> like, why not take 30% yeah. off? What are you yeah. losing? Why do I want to pay full price? Exactly. You're giving me the coupon. Right? <laughs> but it's like, we, we get caught up in things like, oh, I, I'm on here for one reason only. I'm trying to hurry up and get it done. Add it to yeah, my I'm here to eat. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that's yeah, the whatever. thing. It's hard to sell to people who's hungry, yo. Yeah. It's hard oh, to right. upsell people who's hungry. Because if I come in here for food money, I got, I got my mind and my yeah, eyes on my food. that exactly especially as black people that's how we are because we're used to being that. sold to we're always being used Bro, to being upsell it's, it's sad as hell especially some people are really stuck in that mentality it is old like you see them grow old and it's like they haven't changed at, at all. all yeah like, nobody, that, yeah you just want to be stubborn and shit like that like yeah, nah, it's, it's ridiculous i feel bad for I used to feel bad. Yeah, I don't feel bad. Nah, you can't feel bad. As you get older, you can't. You realize you a lot of people, it's too choices. late. It's too late yeah, for a lot of people. Like, you make your own choice. It's not, though. It's nah, not listen. I, I have a saying, right? And I kind of have I kind of have some beliefs to the saying. It's like, once you wash your brain too many times, sometimes it just stays washed. Yeah. When you go to Jamaica, my dude, and you mm -hmm. see some of them dudes who smoke the wrong thing one oh, times too yeah. many. Oh, yeah. It's now, too a situation late. like that, it's yeah, too it's, late. It's hard to yeah. come back. But sometimes that. people don't trip off just drugs. Yeah. Knowledge trip people off. Now, right. Lack of experience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you're not I've ready for certain knowledge, it fucks you up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, that's why I'm saying, when you try to prep people for things they're not ready yet, right. sometimes you ruin them. Now, mm -hmm. you're right. Because I wasn't ready. I know a few years ago, I wasn't mentally ready. To be in the position that I'm in right now, mm. so I had to just I had to get right. When did you start the business? We started. The idea came about in November this mm -hmm. year. Uh, or last year. Last year, yeah. So but COVID, I it's a COVID it business. Years. No, 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 no. It's not a COVID not even. Um, took a trip down south to go see some family. My aunt was making it. Um, and she was just telling us like, you know, you should try. It. I've been taking it, but it was my brother's first time trying it, and she was even saying like, you know, it, it don't taste that great, but I know the benefits of it, so I already knew what it did for me. When my brother is, he's going to do his research. It doesn't matter what you tell him. Like, right, that's that's good. Mm -hmm. you know? So he did yeah. his research. Cool. I tried. We were there for a weekend. Tried it two days. Um, Coming back to Connecticut, typically it's like six hours to get back from, yeah. from the south where we came from. We got back in four and a half hours. Mm. So literally left at midnight, got back at like 425. Yeah, that's the best time to travel. So, mm -hmm. But he was flying. And, and he took some of this before we got on the, he was on the road. He, he was up. up. And he only took a nap for like two hours before we got Oh, wow. So he was revitalized. Yeah. His energy so was kicking. Mm -hmm. Next day he called me. He's like, bro, I know I know exactly what we're doing. So I'm like, mm. like, what you got in mind? You know, whatever. Calling what's coming. With it. He like, we about to start making C-marks. Cool. Then from that point, that was in November. So 
through from November up until I would say probably like January. It was just a test run. Like we had to figure out how to clean it properly, what water yeah. to use with it, fruit, no fruit. So we was just trying it out, getting the bad batches, tasting bad. It's like, I don't know if we still want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go to that trial and error. You got to fail. Yeah. 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 You got to fail. That's why we, we actually like fell forward. So it mm. actually worked out because. I was giving it to a lot of my close friends just to try it. Like, yo, just try this. And they would try it. they like, all right, it tastes clean, but it don't taste like nothing. Mm -hmm. And this was before we start incorporating the fruit with it. And then mm -hmm. once we start incorporating the fruit, because we wanted it to be enjoyable. And now once we start adding that, it's over now. And, like, I was actually introduced to it from a, a gentleman at, I went to a surprise birthday party. And um, he was, he was, you know, Sandy made it and talking about the benefits of it or whatever. So he gave a, a decent story about it that made me interested enough at least to try it myself. So I bought a, um, a jar off him that night, tried it. I'm like, all right, cool. So can I was buying it from. Can you, can you tell us a story? Do you know the yeah, story? Yeah, no, I'm telling. Oh, the story. His about story, what? yeah. Because a lot of people, when they hear, like. Oh, you know. all right, simple. He was saying, like, he was dealing with a certain female mm -hmm. and it was helping them. Oh, he got it. He got him up. He got right. him yeah. up. Oh, he wasn't right. even like. No pills. Like he did that taking, no strong. money. Y'all hear that shit? Stop taking them like, gas yeah, station yeah, pills. Yeah, yeah, Stop going to that gas station. Yeah, that horny goat weed. Them, them tiger bonds and yeah, shit like that. So first of all, I'm not going to stop right. my tiger bone. Because, um, <laughs> no, no, no. Don't stop taking yeah, tiger bones. Yeah, I do my tiger bones. Nah, I'm talking about the other shit they got in the gas station. Nah, the horny goat pill. That horny goat weed. That's what it's called. The horny goat weed pills. Yeah. I know these things too fucking much. No X, Y. He was he was just telling me, you know, he had a female that he was dealing with and he was taking it from there. And he was just giving me the rundown, like how healthy it was making them, how he was feeling the difference. So I'm like, all right, the health reason for me was enough because I'm like, I'm in the gym all the time. I'm seeing the results, but I'm like, if I'm, if I clean up my diet and just the way I'm, I'm living my yeah. life a little bit more, I'll see even better, better results. Mm -hmm. And I start taking that and I start, it, it just like transformed. Mm. And then, you know, once COVID had came, you know, everybody was kind of like a little distant. So I wasn't able to get it from him as much as I wanted I want to. to. And so then that's how it was perfect timing. And then that's when my brother was like, yo, we just going to do it. Fuck and it. then after that. Yeah. Look where you at now. Look where we at now. Like, and ooh, the rest crazy. is history. The rest is like, and we're still really, making history. We yeah, just getting fact. started. Like, we fact. literally just. That's crazy. Really that just the beginning. I thought you was going to tell me I started this like a year or two ago or some nah, shit. Like nah, that. it's just the beginning. November. It's not even a year yet. I was about to say, Damn. like, it be a year in November, huh? Yeah, come November. Dang, like, that's November crazy. 16th is when the idea came about. Damn. Like, yo, so, this is what we're going to do. I heard the process of making sea moss mm -hmm. edible is a bitch. What you mean? Oh, no, nah, it's not. It's not. I heard that's why a lot of people don't do it. Just. The first <laughs> the test run is is very learning, learning. it. Yeah, okay, learning, learning it is the hard but, but part. Because like we don't eyeball it. We not just mm. throwing a little sea moss in the blender, a little bit of fruit, a little bit of water. You Everything written down. Because you gotta extract the actual yeah. sea moss and make. You gotta clean it. Yeah, that's why really I mean. you gotta properly. clean it. Yeah, you gotta soak it, and then you know you gotta use some real good alkaline water too. Don't yeah. use no. Where you get your alkaline water from? Um, we get our we use aquapana water, so we just get it straight from the grocery store. But I've been in contact with it. Uh, a gentleman that said he has water, so I'm gonna reach out to him and see, you know, how that goes. But so you gotta yeah. soak it and let it sit. You gotta yeah, clean that. Have to, Cause it's like actual I, sea moss is from the it's, sea. It's, it's 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 real like tough. It's it's firm. So once you soak it, it loosens it up, and you really gotta clean it because you can find rocks in there, pebbles, and it's real dirty. Yeah, it's real dirty. The water is dirty. Yeah, the sea's dirty, nigga. Filthy, so. People pissing that it. shit. That's why, like, I don't know if you ever animals heard. pissing that shit. Yeah, shit and shit and all of that. So I don't know if you ever heard a story where like. Somebody tries sea moss and they like it tastes fishy or it's yeah. That's because it's not clean and thoroughly. Right. Some, yeah, right. Like you know, people they probably cleaned it once or twice, but they or they might have just rinsed it off. Yeah, not properly. To not ever yeah. just rinse off sea moss because it's going to taste the same every time. You those clean. It. Those be the same people that probably wash their chicken in the sink. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> people, right on the sink really too. Don't even clean that shit. They don't know that. A lot of people don't have a clean period. Mm -hmm. A lot of them don't need to. They don't. That's why COVID scared the fuck out of them because they weren't clean before that's this funny shit. Too, like when I was younger, my mom used to be like, "Your definition of clean is not the same." Not as the same. Mine. Yeah. So I'm a, an oh, adult, you see I'm it. Fully you understand. understand. Yeah. I'm like, yes. She was right. Yeah. yeah. The, as a kid, you just see the surface. Yeah. Like, you see exactly. Surface yeah. Shit. Like, like, oh, let me put this shit in closet. Right. Yeah. Like that. It wasn't deep clean. I'm just tossing stuff to get it out my. Vision. Exactly. You wonder why your parents were scrubbing the walls and shit. Like, why are you doing that kind of shit? Right. I'm like, yo, I mean, but now you get older, you like, oh, you got to scrub. I will say this, though. My aunt 
and um, I'll be, and a lot of other women that be around, they find things to clean that you would never think of cleaning. Won't even think about it at all. At all, I'm like, why did you even think of cleaning? I'm like, it builds exactly, it builds bacteria. Know. I'm like, oh, I wouldn't even think about all of that right, right there. Exactly. <laughs> like even the tiles, like yeah. in between the tiles, no, the no, mildew yeah, that be yeah, building yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You really have to clean that, that shit all the time, and even showers. Even you think water is in the shower, and if you don't clean that shit, you gotta clean that all around. All that shit. All your dirt that fell off of you. All of that. People have the same shower curtain for years. Trust me, living with my wife, bro, I, I done learned so much about fucking yeah, cleaning like, and yeah. shit. And nah, it's, disclaimer, he has an island, girl. Yeah. Not yeah. all... Uh, I'm gonna say it. I don't give yeah, a damn. Island, yeah. Not all American girls be proper like that, you know? Yeah, yeah. She, she, like, not, she not playing. A lot of these girls, just, these, are, these, be be like, the, these be the Uncle Ben Rice girls, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the three-man yeah, rice. You remind me of my mom, man. I gotta yeah. get up and clean. Facts. Like, yo, yes, so and they get mad at you if you don't do shit properly, man. You get got it. to do shit It's properly. their way or no way because yeah. you don't clean properly. <laughs> As men, like, most men just don't, don't clean. Even if you, when you not clean, my nigga, even when you think you're cleaning properly, my nigga, it's not good enough for a lot of women, my nigga. They clean shit you never thought about fucking cleaning. Nah, you're right. Like, some for my, what? Some of my female friends are like that, too. They, like, from the islands or whatever, so... They they clean thoroughly. Like, and they'll come to your house and clean your house. They not leaving their house. Until it's clean. Until it's clean. Until it's clean. And you be looking at it like... It's just clean. clean. Smell good. Out there. Like, nah. Like, nah I gotta sweep clean. this. Yeah, I gotta sweep like, this. I gotta vacuum, vacuum this. Vacuum mops. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't never mopped six times in a week. Bro. <laughs> like, I ain't talking shit as that. <laughs> I ain't never mopped that much times, man. Listen, I'm telling you something, man. Six times in a week, yo. Bro. Oh, man. That's a lot of mopping. Yeah, one day off, bro. Yeah, like, this it. shit. I'm like, yo, man. Especially having kids, too, man. Oh, yeah, you like, got to clean every day. Man, I'm like, yo, I got to stop this. This is crazy. How many kids you got? Two. Two? <laughs> so, I know you. What, she nah, done and she said. Nah, nah, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't done. Yeah, <laughs> far from done. We not done. Yeah, we not done. <laughs> yeah, done. Now, I want 10 kids. <laughs> Yeah, I'm down for a stopping five. Yeah, I'm down for ten. Yeah, but I got zero. She ain't so down for ten though. I'm, I'm twenty eight and all. Yeah, I'm twenty eight and all. I don't have no kids right yeah. now. Yeah, I want two girls and I'm good. I, yo, it's funny because I want girls. I want two girls. I want girls man. too. I get my if I get two girls. I'm Were you a dog? Were you a dog as a teenager? Do you think yeah, you, de- you think you deserve two girls? <laughs> <laughs> I think I do though. Yeah, I hesitate. Do two girls. I yeah, do. I, I think just, I do too. You gotta, you gotta learn. <laughs> you gotta learn. Man. I was just running. Nah, girls change your life, bro. That's why I want them. Yo, girls change your fucking that's life. That's gonna be necessary. Nigga, be, like, I be finding my time. I be finding times where I literally get emotional mm-hmm. at times and I don't know why. Yeah. So girls. you got kids? Nah, I don't. Oh, you have? Okay. Nah, How old are you? Uh, 28. Oh, what? Yeah. Start but starting. I... I kind of look like I kind of treat like two kids like that. I kind of treat yeah. two kids like they're my kids. Right, right. So right. like I I raise them like a, but as like you grow on them, it's like damn man, yeah. it's like you miss nah, them at times. Just have like, something about them different, yeah. man. Right. Okay. Towards them, the kids yeah. they, they brutally honest too. Like if they're not comfortable around, you, or they let you know, they don't fuck with you. Nah, they don't fuck with you at all. Not even close. You don't get a chance. So I'm gonna let y'all know from now. If y'all kids don't fucking listen, don't bring them around me. <laughs> I discipline kids. Yeah, kids. You know, kids. I can discipline be kids. No, it's just, you know, with their upbringing. You know, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm letting you know. Sometimes I discipline kids. You need if you, guidance, man. If you don't do it at home, don't bring him around me because he's getting disciplined. <laughs> I'm dead. I ain't going to beat your child, but I'm nah, I'm got, teaching you know, that motherfucker I, manners. Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I, I'll talk stern to it. Bro. That's, that's yeah, big, me that's too. Big, that's big, though, because a lot of people don't. A lot of people too lazy to teach their kids manners. Yeah, they and that'd be the like, simple bro, shit, yo. Like, I, yo simple it's unfortunate, shit. too, because it's a lot of single moms out here that. So they trying to. Take care of the household, especially you know, with boys. Run the uh, work or run their company or whatever. Yeah, all of that shit. It's yeah, tough, yo. They still got to be a mom to the child. Of course, that comes first. It always like, comes first. Sometimes it seems like it's getting pushed to the back burner because they're trying to make sure everything is running smooth for the household. Especially with these young boys, man. Yeah, the young shit, boys. You they... can't teach it like, yo, I know they be working hard. They do whatever they can. Yeah, I'm going to keep it a buck, bro. From what I see, yo, when it comes to single moms, it's tougher when they have all girls. Tough. When they have you all girls, so? yes. It's my nigga, first time even that. Why, just why just from experience and seeing it, my nigga. Like a lot of girls, that once they reach certain age, they learn and figure out how and ways to push their mom, my nigga. And they know they when. Them. Yeah, and you know, moms, they reach a point where they just can't take no more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And kids know oh, I've what seen girls that. they know when. I've seen that. Man. Boys, they always just push the limit because they're boys, my yeah, nigga. But girls do it in a yeah. devious and sneaky way, in a way that's just be like. How the fuck did you even think yeah, of that yeah, shit, yeah. yo? Across your mind. Yes, but right. when when girls are around men, 
it's it's different because they have that men energy it's around it's it's love, exactly yeah. like around their father they they move mm-hmm. different with men around, you know? i mean girls around their dad you know, it's different like, you could just see it they're attached to them so yeah. that, that, I, i'm like yes both parents are important but every child need that opposite sex uh, opposite sex experience in their life they yeah. need that mm-hmm. shit Two parent households are important. They're it's, very it's, important. It's very, important. Again. it's very uh it's not that much of them <laughs> out here, unfortunately. But you know, we it's 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 kinda like we in a position now where like we can break that generational curse. Yeah. We Even can, if you're not in a two parent household, man, take care of your damn yeah, kids. Yeah, man. Exactly. Like, you know, co parenting and all that too. Yeah, man. Stop being out here doing dumb shit. Yeah, just not leaving the female out. Stop trying to chill with y'all niggas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Everybody crazy. just like want to link with the bros all the time. For like, what? Bro, Why you not with your kids? Yeah, like be with your kids. Bro. And be like, with the person who can give you some pussy. At least. At least. What, what you on bucket bro. fist every single night? Every night. I hope y'all not having y'all bros do it for y'all. <laughs> niggas, niggas go home at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. yeah. They girl done fell asleep. What not you doing, bad. my nigga? I know you're horny. <laughs> I know you are, my nigga. What you gonna do? I know your bros can't you take you that far, nah, bro. Nah, Yo. No way. Nah, it's nigga, you know there's a thing called a bro job? Hey. I mean, I fire for that. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what that is. This was a thing that actually came up. That's your up. thing? Hey, whatever, you know, that's your thing, but so... Nah, but it be the street niggas. <laughs> it be the street niggas that be polluting the most pum pum, yo. Yo. No, nigga. They're pum pum polluters all the way, my nigga. Pum-pum, all oh, pum pum polluters. And by a pum pum polluter... that on a shirt. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta throw that on a shirt. Get you some merch. Hey, shout out to 100% Vegan Water if you want... On Anybody who don't know what a pum pum polluter is is one of them <laughs> people who go fuck one of their men's in the body and then go oh, fuck with their nah, girls raw. Nah, That's nah, nasty. Nah, nah. And got a wife yeah. in a home. Yes, like cause they know they're not using condoms with their girls when they come out here, my nigga. They know they're not. It's a sick world, and these man. niggas out here in the streets be getting their nut off by any means necessary, dog. Nah, it's a sick oh no, for go shooting a blood clot self. <laughs> that for dead. If you touch picnic and touch yourself, I'll touch. You know, let me stop. Let me stop before I get them. If that's your thing, man, just do that, man. Don't don't wanna be out here hiding and shit. That's if that's your thing, my nigga, just leave the pussy for the niggas who want just pussy. <laughs> yeah. If that's your thing, stop being greedy and stop being selfish, yo. There's niggas who only want pussy. And there's niggas only who only want black girls pussy. <laughs> hey yo. Can we like Y'all can, cont- this, right this man, y'all, this y'all, man, can con- hey. y'all can contaminate all the pum pums that you want. Leave the black girl pum pums alone. They already teeth in all the black girls. Don't pollute the pum pums of the ones that don't get teeth. Jesus Christ! No. <laughs> man, when this man gets going, man, he gets going. That's Sometimes all I'm saying. Let him go, man. That's all I'm saying, yo. I'm telling you. Save our black girls stuff, and man. save the black girls pum pum from being polluted, yo. That's all I'm saying, yo. We just hashtag that bitch, yo. That's all I'm saying. We got to save a lot of things in this world. And it's the things that you don't think that need to be saved that needs to be saved. It's going to save humanity. And we know black woman pum pum is humanity. It is oh the base God. of humanity. Oh. Am I wrong? Anybody going to disagree with me there? I'm not going to disagree with okay. you. All right. Okay. All right. All right. So can we like keep valuable pum pum valuable? <laughs> all right. I'm done with so, my rear. All right. So, Mike, <laughs> how, did you, how did you get partnered with um the Russell? That how did, that, how did so that come through, up? Um, actually, through my boy Splash. Um, Shout out to Splash. Yeah, Real shit. Doing a lot so. of things. Anybody who's listening, I want that man on the podcast. Help me yeah, make that happen. He, he, yeah, nah, he um he was really like in touch with the uh, the owner and his wife, so they were getting it through him from me. Mm, you know, they love it. This was before the grab and go was even open. This is the one. It was just the Russell. The, down, the Russell still there. Yeah, when it was just know, Russell downtown. This was before the grab and go was yeah. like actually open. So I didn't even know it was for them. I just like he would hit me like, bro, like this is the order, cool. Because I'm like, bro, anytime like you need it, just hit me. I got you. And that's just the relationship we got. So um, reached out a couple times, just giving them their jars, and then um, once the grab and go opened send me another text just putting the order in so I'm like alright I'll drop it off mm. I'm like you gonna be there and he's like nah you good like you know just they expecting you anyway so I go and I seen Gabe around a couple times but I actually like met him that day in person talk, yeah, yeah, yeah. It up, and I'm just you know introducing myself the brand the company you know what, how it even started and all that and we instantly clicked Click. like 
Home is home is good vibes, bro. Yeah. Home is good yeah, vibes. Amazing. Yeah. Yes, yeah, like, yo, he's showing nothing but love. Amazing, like every time, like he, if, like he if positivity was like, a person, he would, it would be. Nah, him. he's straightforward. Like, yeah, he's yeah. a straight shooter. <laughs> he's stern, like, but yo, his knowledge you can learn so much from mm. him. Like, literally, just sitting there talking to him, you will really pick learn his brain. so much. Like, you don't even gotta pick his brain. He just gonna give like, you know. knowledge sometimes because that's just how his mind works. So, but yeah, Splash end up. Um, hooking that up just from them placing the orders and then you know the product they enjoy the product as well and then the presentation and then just us building our own rapport too just having conversations with each other and then that's how we in there top show there you go personality set so that's your first that's your first like uh, in store that was the first one now it's just we moving now like I said earlier even we just um, closing on the partnership with Diligence training facility out there in East Hartford Make sure you check them out. They got amazing trainers. Can you share any details on that? I don't know if they nah, announced not, it yet. Not okay, yet. Not well, yet. Well, we, right. we posted it. I, we made a post. Okay, so follow, have, follow them on Instagram. Yeah, please, drop your Intelligence drop, Trainer. And then drop your... Shout out to L. Drop your Instagram, Mothers underscore Moss. Uh, yeah, Mothers yeah, underscore Moss. There you go. Yeah. Follow that as well, too. Keep up yeah. with all of that. Yes. Yeah, and so also, we was, ta- we, was talking, we was talking about something off air as well, too. And I also want to bring this up. Pink pineapples. <laughs> Yeah, bro, you said some crazy number about these. Pink, yeah, pink pineapples. pineapples. It's, and it's a real thing. Bro. I've never heard of pink A lot of pineapples. people haven't. I thought it was a grapefruit. Nah, I thought these colors. genetically engineered probably shots with some pink liquid or some nah, shit like that. Just, however Damn. they do it, it comes, we get ours directly from Canada. I just instantly thought of the grapefruit lady, yo. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the grapefruit lady? You don't know who the grapefruit lady is? Bro, Yo, bro. your ch- your oh, teenage, man. your young adulthood sucks. And you got a wife? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's true. Oh, 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 the grateful lady. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. It clicked, it clicked. You, once you said that, it clicked. I understand exactly. Yeah. Shout out to the grateful lady, man. Shout out to the grateful lady. Yo, she, this she, nigga she, slow sometimes. Yeah. Facts, yeah. everybody know who the grateful lady is. Yeah, yeah. We all know who the grateful lady is. That video was legendary. It was. It was necessary. Facts. Yeah, it was necessary for the culture, man. If you know where she at right now, tell her weed and whiskey. Shut her out, yeah. Podcast. Yes, yeah. you good for the yeah, culture. Too, Facts. See if she could do it that. Facts. Yeah. <laughs> Keep that mouth with some longevity, yeah. you know. <laughs> so, yo, yo, do you do you gotta like do you have to, you yeah. have to you can't just be eating bullshit and then think Nah, no way. You don't have the right? same results, bro, at all. Like, you can't eat this and then just think, like, your body's going to react to it the way you would like for it to. You got to drink your water. You know, you got to eat your vegetables. You got to get your electrolytes. That. Everything you heard as a kid, eat your vegetables and all that. You really have to Except do for that, drinking man. your milk. Don't drink nah, your milk. Nah, don't drink, don't drink milk. No milk. No milk. Don't drink no car sure milk. you sure you're getting your rest. Facts. Yeah, like, yeah, that's what a lot of people take. Like you take care of your body, it's gonna take care of you. I'm glad you said that. It all starts with the rest. We live yeah. in a we live in a generation or that came up on, I get sleep when I'm dead. We yeah, lived on that a lot of saying. You know that saying. No. I know y'all heard that saying. A lot of people say that. I don't yeah, agree. Yeah, I can't do that, I nigga. That. What? Sleep when I'm blood clot, nah, dead dog? We all got to know. We don't know what happens after we die. Exactly. So why the fuck am I trying to think about that? Like, I don't even believe in death. Bro, I don't know what happens when we leave from here. I, to, believe, to me, to believe in death is to believe in an end. And mm-hmm. my mind can't perceive an end. But that's when it's all over. It's exactly. Me, and it, that's it's when never over. All and it's over. never over. Exactly. Yeah, it's just a new it's beginning. Just, yeah, just... So it's like the way you train your mind to see things is mm-hmm. very, very important. Like when they say perspective matters, yeah. it really fucking matters. You know, like that's why I train myself to say I don't believe in death because if I was to accept death, is to accept that my mom is no longer with me. Yeah. This, my cousin's no longer with me. Close friends is no longer with me. Like, that's to accept that. So I can't. And if you believe those people are still with you, then you also don't believe in death. Yeah. And just like how you said perspective, though, like how we touched on earlier, people aren't exposed to certain things. Like how you said, you never they know. watch their brain. Exactly. Their brain. They'll never know. So They'll never certain, know. You can only see certain perspective, but so far because of what you're exposed to exactly so if you're not exposed to the knowledge that you need you will never see things for the way you need to see it the way you need to you're that's not gonna a, live your life the way you probably that's need a to. big problem like oh, people don't know what's out there like yo you could you could do something easily with your life yo, but you don't, don't know do what's the out proper there. research people don't read yeah like man. make sure y'all go get the five bags book too make sure y'all go get that facts man mm-hmm. pick that up everywhere 
everywhere and getting into your five bags. That's why I want to yeah, get him on so he can. Everyone. I want him to explain exactly what the five bags is too. You know, nah, from his perspective, it it's he exactly what we want. We need it. We need the weed and whiskey to have that content as well too, man. Yeah. So we need to get Splash over here, man. We got to because he's doing great things for the community. Again, great shout out to him, man. Like, I don't even know if it's a word. Yo, facts. Facts. There's no... Yo. You can't even put a word on what he's doing. And then the way he does it is honestly... Effortless, too. <laughs> and it's kind of like perfect it's in a sense. It's meant for him, though. Yeah, it's like but, calling Yeah, him. you like, can't, you can't deny when somebody does things just straight. Every, like, no matter what the situation was, he kept doing it. Like, yeah kept doing it kept doing it kept doing it and then like yo you just be you're just that person after a while like right, people right. just honestly like, like it's, it, it always it's just it's, it's for him like it, yeah. you can't deny it it's yeah. for him everything he's doing is for him to me it kind of all started for him like with the year of the bag song with who um um, cool Q and um, oh, Carlo nah, Rossi. He's been, he been like, when, yeah, like bro, he been. That's what and he was, but I feel like when he yeah. dropped that, yeah, bro, that's when he like set his that, foot. Like, Conversations that he has that people don't get to see. You get to see when things come to fruition. Exactly. Yeah. But like it, the way his mind works, it's moved different, and that's why yeah, I, I feel like different. I feel like we we love to hear that intake and just for our audience to hear that in, that that perspective as well too. Because the way he moved with his business, yo, he aggressive. Gotta be <laughs> my nigga aggressive, yo. Gotta be like he a wolf. Because yo, what's the worst somebody, worst thing somebody could tell you? No, that's it. That's it. Move forward. Move forward. Yeah. And that's the mentality I've been had for, as far as I can remember. Worst thing somebody could tell me is no. You tell me no one time, all right, cool. It's whatever. Yeah, because I know, I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Ask the next person. I know what I'm going to do. You can't stop me. You can't, can't stop, stop me. Yeah. Going on. You can't stop can't me. can't at all. But and a lot of people don't have that type of drive nowadays. Uh, that's on them. That's their fault. A lot of people, but, and a lot of people just want quick money, yo. And that's yeah. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned. This they is want not a money grab money. for me. That's yeah. why I like, I it's really all I love. It's people, all I love. Bro. Yes, I really yo. Care about the pe- I care about the kids. Like, and I want the kids to be able to see, like, tapping with these type of things we got going on to let them know, like, yo, you can literally do anything you want to do. Anything. I just want this to spark the interest in at least one kid to let them know, yo, I can start my own business, my own company. Easy. I get together with my people. Right. Yeah. Like, group economics is real, bro. And right. we lack that in our community. So if a kid see, like, oh, all right, I want to start selling shirts or I want to start anything they want to do they grab their boy like yo let's let's start i used to Listen, sell candy bro if you yeah. if you if i used you, to sell candy the shit like, that we have in here my nigga we, yeah. we do everything at yeah. home that's you know? good yeah. though that's everything how you, is that's at how home should be because like, we don't want to i'm tired of reaching out to people and waiting on daytime and expect yeah. their yeah. prices yeah. Like and, then, feet don't eat, huh? and then once you do the things that you want other people to do you know your worth and the worth of what you're asking for as yeah. well too so yeah. you know when you're being overcharged yeah for sure yeah. and you that's important to, yeah you don't have to you don't Nobody can overdo you. Like nobody can screw you over nah. and shit like, like that. Like I get people saying I, I I charge the prices I charge because of such and such, but my nigga, some of y'all really be fucking extorting, yo. Yeah, yo. yo, it's like what I've realized too. Once you got like your system flowing and every people gonna want to start coming to you. Exactly. Be, and like yeah. they might have fronted on you at first or like shun you off. They come the back side. once they see it's the real. respect get there now. Now that respect level for you is Different. through the roof. So they like, oh now I wanna get near that person. I wanna it's, see what they got. Especially going on. where we at, because out here you gotta have that type of uh that type of uh I don't know how to say it, but I use the word clout. Mm. Right? You gotta have that type of clout to have people come to you because now once they see all, oh, like, oh, yeah, this dude came in. I'll say, dude, like, notoriety. Right. Yeah, notoriety. That's all right, a good that's word. a better notoriety. word. That's a better that's a word. One. That's a better word. That's a way better word. Right, so, right. like, once you have that, once you have these certain people, people like, oh, all right, I could, I could fuck with that now. Because, like, I tell I tell a lot of my friends, like, that, you know, they're interested in getting, starting their own company, getting into the business and stuff like that. Like, you got to be seen and be heard. You got to. Because if nobody see you and don't hear about you, then... You're just going to be complaining. you stuck on the idea. <laughs> yeah. you stuck on a whole bunch of merch. You stuck on whatever product that you're pushing. If people don't see about it, don't hear about it, you're never going to move it. Yeah. I will say this. I know a lot of people probably have the same problem that I have. And I know it's tough for us. I'm not even trying to make it as an excuse because it's part. I think it's part of the reason I'm in a lot of positions that I still be in. Because I still have my own frustrations. Even with the success that still comes, you still have your own personal frustration. Mm. Like, one of my biggest problems is uh, I like being an introvert too fucking much. Mm. Like... I love my time. Yeah. I love being in control of my space. I love me time. And I get really overwhelmed sometimes when I'm around too many, too big crowds. Right. If the crowd is too big and the energy just is a little off too much on one side, I got to go. I can't be there because I'm too much of an empath for a lot of that shit. Yeah. So that 
let that be my own downfall because sometimes your biggest blessing is your biggest curse. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what? You know what? My best like when it comes to that, my best thing was creating your own energy. Yeah. Right? Mm. So like, cause I used to be really introverted, like as especially as a kid, like I was, I was not, I was not doing no crowds, yeah. none of that shit, no public speaking. Right. And then something clicked in my head. It was like, yo, fuck it, whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. I could get seen as how I am. You can hear me out, or you could just keep going with your own perspective. How you see me? Yeah. Anyways, nah, cause like same for me. Like as a kid, I my brother is the reason why I'm just, I could talk in front of anybody. Now. Yeah. Cause he used to always tell me, yo, speak up. Even at the candy truck, we younger. I'm, I'm like, yo, order that for me. He like, damn, nigga. Talk, nah, man. nigga, talk. Are you going to eat? Are you going to eat, nigga, shit? That so much over the years. That's yeah. why it's like now, it's like, I'm not I'm not going to stop talking at all now. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm on it now. I have a cousin that taught me something um, that I always live by is um, closed mouths don't get fat. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's And so that applies right. to every situation. That's just like being seen and being heard. Yeah. Man. How you going to eat if you don't open your mouth? Yeah, yo, your feet don't eat. Man. At all, yeah, man, again. Yeah. It's over. You get lapped. It's time, cl- and time and time and, again. And it, it, it's crazy, right? How we grew up and hating all these cliches. And them wow. shits is like literally what we're living by. <laughs> literally, these are our manifestations now. Yeah, these are people's yeah. manifestations. The cliches that we hated growing up. Right. But it shows you... Because it's an ignorance that is being a child, though. That's the ignorance of yeah. being a child. Like, it goes back to just, perspective. It just shows you how as you grow and you start learning things, like your, your power change. Yeah. Because you start learning new things, because you start opening yourself to new things, you start realizing, oh, I have different capabilities. Yeah. That's why it's important. To, I think it's important to leave your state, leave your country, you leave your country. World, you have to leave your world. country at least once. Because if you only go to Florida and you only <laughs> go to fucking um, what's the other or, or Myrtle Beach, if you only go to those all the time, yeah. you're you still stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't seen much, like. Go somewhere where they drive on the opposite man, side of the, the road. Books, man. Read drive to book. Canada. Read the book. People gotta read yes. more. Yes. Yes. Yeah, man, I don't. I be trying to read, read, man. Audio books, podcasts, whatever, man. Just, just. I be trying. Get to get that that I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of podcasts. This yeah. goes back but, to our first episode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, about reading. And nah, reading. books, paper books versus audio books. Oh, I'm I'm audio all the way. I'm paper all the way. I hate audio. I hate audio. And plus, I'm always on the go, so. So do you car, see like that reading? I'm retaining the information. Okay. Okay. Right. See, I th- like that. That's that. I'm we should have said that in the first. That's first the episode. thing, and that's that's the thing. I like to me reading is a a privilege in a sense. Mm. It's something like it was something that I like to me because I'm a writer. Mm. As like before, I was a content creator. Before anything, I was always a poet. Okay. So me writing, reading was very important to me. Yeah. So uh, to me, having something physical in my hand. And literally, like diving into it, yeah. that was important. So to you me. got it's different for you because you re- you appreciate. Yeah, it. And, you it's know, the you art know what that, it takes to go into exactly. It. And I feel like it's the art that's dying because to me, when you do it on the phone, unless you have your shit like an airplane mode or whatnot, you're, you're getting notifications. Yeah, exactly, comes close out the app. Exactly, and and, else. and to me, I don't like the idea of technology middleman in that because yeah. to me, that's an exchange of energy. Because when I, I know when I write, there's times when I'm writing and I'm literally crying. As I'm writing, yeah. I'm literally putting my tears on my on my paper. Yeah. So I feel like where are these? Where are this emotion come from? Ex- me? Ah, damn, that's actually a real fucking mm-hmm. good question. That is a good question. Damn. All right, I'm gonna be real. I'm gonna be real. You gonna take the shot for that one? So I really started writing when I um when I came up here mm-hmm. because at nine I came up here from like my mom and my sister, which was. The two influential people in my life. Those were the people who played the most, had the biggest impacts on who I was. And just, and I was just nine. I was, I was a very emotional child growing up to start off with. Yeah. But as I started getting up here and I started distancing and trying to learn to live without the people that I was living the most for, yeah. I had to, in a sense, became cold-hearted. Okay. So I developed two sides to me. So you said living without the people. Yeah. So... Did they pass or they just... My mom away? just passed three years ago and my sister still lives in Jamaica. I got a question, but I'll let you finish. Yeah, so like me like learning to live without them, I kind of like had to separate my emotions from a lot because yeah. a lot of things remind me of them. Right. So I had to learn to live in the with the idea of, in a sense, they don't exist. Yeah. So, and writing for me was my escape because I, I tap back into my emotions. I can... And to me, I'm an empath. Mm-hmm. So... 
it wasn't always my emotions. Yeah. I can have a conversation with you and I'm just sitting here by myself thinking, just meditating. And right. then I, I just recollect something that you said and it just sparked a whole thing. Trigger, I, like, yeah. yeah. Trigger words. Exactly. So I'm literally writing a story just off our conversation and it probably just triggered off one line. Right. So that was me. I, I learned to, instead of making my emotions mine, I write emotions for other people and I write other people's emotions. Yeah. So that's why I became emotional because I wanted to, use other people's emotions to escape my emotions if yeah. that makes sense now nah, it does so my next question how how have you dealt with or how are you dealing with the passing of your mom so my mom passed away too that's how they even the title of that came mother's from. mom's okay yeah. and my mom passed away in 09 yeah so it's been a while so you yeah, still you still it's still hits. i'm way better now than i was t for 12 like the last 12 years it's hard bro I, and I, I hope nobody ever has to experience that. It's, but it's, if you don't know, if you haven't been through it, you don't know what it feels and like. And it's hard to empathize. So it's going, like like you said, you're an introvert. So you say to yourself and stuff like that. So that's it just that. Because sometimes you don't want to talk to nobody. Nobody. Because you don't, nobody, nobody, you don't you express it. by yourself. Yeah, exactly. So, and, like, I know for me, like, I, I, sometimes I'll be tired of just having to tell people the same story thing because over and one, over. For one, I don't want sympathy from anybody. At all. Cause what you gonna do is can't bring my can't mom back. Nothing for me. Like, it's not gonna make me feel in better. In the moment, you can't do nothing. Nothing. I appreciate though. I'm sorry to hear that. Cool. My man. condolences. That's yeah. cool. I appreciate all of that. And bro. how do you respond back to that? That's my thing too. How do you respond to somebody I, saying I I'm sorry respond, for your loss? Cause like it's not your fault. Exactly. But it's just you know people are trained that way because they don't know what else to say. Yeah, I, I don't, don't know what to say. For that. I don't I'm know what to say. That, but yeah, I, I don't either. But now that I lost my mom, I'm not gonna lie. I can I can generally say I understand because. To me, it was principle. I could never tell somebody I understand in a situation where I literally don't, don't understand. Because we'll never understand fully understand until how you experience else it. Feels. Exactly. Yeah. I don't like you could explain as best as you can. I can't feel what you I feel. Can, yeah. I can understand to a degree just yeah. because of how I felt. But right. if you've never experienced it, you can't You'll say never know. I understand because you, you can't tap into just something guessing. that you've never experienced at all. So, exactly. It's all guessing. speculation. That's it. Like when I lost my mom. All right, so here's the thing, too. I, I, a lot of people don't even know this, but I've actually, years before losing my mom, I actually had a conversation with myself, and I told myself, oh, Shane, one day you're going to lose your mom, and you're going to have to learn to live without her. And I, it took me a few years to grasp that idea alone, yeah. but I had learned to live without my mom because yeah. being up here away from her and her being thousands of miles away, I didn't know how... It was not just... Hey, you know, yeah, just fly, yeah. fly and go see her and all this type of, especially when you're so focused on you right. and being an introvert, you'll be so caught up in your own world sometimes that you, at a while, you don't even think about it no more. Mm -hmm. So when it happened, I was distraught. I was, honestly, I was broken. Yeah. That's true. I thought I was ready. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> I thought I was ready. I was nowhere There's near no ready. No way you could be you ready for no shit like that. No matter what talk you have with yourself. And I think some of the hardest parts for me is I can still remember, like, because in Jamaica, we have things called setup. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's like a celebration of life before the actual funeral. So this is when you, the liquor and the spirits really come out. So I remember my little brother sitting here crying, saying, like, he had to live with the fact that he had to see her take her last breath. Mm -hmm. And I remember here arguing with him, telling him, but I wish I did. I wish yeah. that was me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was the fact that we were grieving on different levels. Yep. I didn't understand that at first. And then I and then I took some time away from the emotions. And yeah. I was like, my older brother grieves differently because he used to talk to her every day. He, he You know, he, he had a different conversation. Everybody has a different perspective. Exactly. Right. So Everybody. me understanding that, I started realizing like, oh, you start, you got to move the way you actually was already moving. Yeah. You can't like. I'm big on acting different and, and, and keeping the same energy, even with the people close to you. Right. It's a principal thing with me because it's like, if I was comfortable moving that way already, what changed? Right. I only have to just cope with losing my mom when the times it hit me. Because when it, at first, I honestly, I lost friends. Mm. I did. I lost friends I actually never thought I'd lose. Like, we still became cool again because we actually reached our own, but because they didn't give me Sim emotions that I wanted at the moment, I was disappointed. And like, I'm sure you realize now, but they I don't know exactly. how. They didn't even know how. To, exactly. You know, so I had one of my friends actually stayed away from me because they didn't know, they know how. how. Yeah, they just don't, and they're not wrong for that. They're not, and I shouldn't yeah. wrong them for they're that wrong either. For that. Yeah. And it was on my, and that's why I had to 
come around and had that big man conversation because I found out I was I came to the conclusion I was wrong for expecting certain things from them. Yeah, it wasn't for me to expect that from them because at the end of the day, you're the only one really going through it. Yeah, they never experienced it. Before, never experienced. So they, they, they don't have know their the mom, first thing to say to and them. they don't want to be rem- they don't want to be reminded of the fact that they're gonna potentially lose their mom. That and it's just like. It's uncomfortable to be around somebody that's grieving. Yeah, you just gotta, li- you guys just gotta listen though. Yeah, you, you really just have to sit there and just be that that air that they need. Sometimes people just need you in their presence. They, just, really wanna you don't wanna, they don't want to talk. They just need that company. That's it. You don't have to talk about what's bothering me at all. Nothing. Especially as men. Yeah. Especially as men. We right. don't like even we don't want to talk about our feelings or emotions. Like yeah. we just want to try to but yeah, why have that? a good time. Why? Like all right, so. Let's speak from, per- like, me and our friends, like, our friend group, like, it was predominantly males. So, with us, we understood each other. Mm. We had a spoken language where emotions is a dub. But if you if it's to a point where it's unbearable, you give your signs, you know? Yeah. You let your signs know, and then we'll pick up on it. Because we're good at picking up on our signs. And, that like, it's to the point where once you see the signs, you know your man's going to start crying right then and there. What you do is you roll up and you pass him a spliff. So you run from it. That's what we, that's exactly what we did. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm going to be honest. That's exactly what we did. Because a lot of my, my toughest conversations didn't really come from my closest friends. Because yeah. I didn't know how to approach them right. to have that conversation. But with a, with somebody who don't know you as well and expect certain misdemeanors and things like that, yeah. it's easier to open up to them. Right. Because they they have an unbiased opinion on yeah. it. And that's what I like. I don't like somebody who be like, oh, you should have did this. Right. Or somebody who feel like you're forced, they're forcing their, their perspective onto you. Because that was big for me.